So this is a simple example of using Product Template Studio to swap components, to replace components. I'm going to do this with visual rules inside uh, a product template. Um, this assembly here has a base that's this big brown thing, and there are three kind of sockets on this base here at A, B, and C. And at the moment, we've got three kind of cartoony components plugged into these. But fundamentally, these three are uh, assembled in using assembly constraints. That's part of what we're going to see. Uh, and each of these has kind of a, a you know, a, a planar three planes there that it's using to attach it in. Um, we've prepared each of these parts with uh, names on those faces. So this one you see is an assembly right, SSM right, and there's an SM left, and there's an SM bottom down here, B. Similarly, this guy with its three there has a left and a right and a bottom as well. Uh, actually, I guess it's this one. It's that, that's the right and the left and the bottom for that one. And then this one as well here has a, a right and a left. There we go. And a bottom, right? And so each of those are plugged into, those faces are used to assemble that part into the base here, okay? Um, this one's not in right. <laughs> oh, we're not doing this one yet. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that one for now. Um, <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got A and B here. A is done, okay? So the behavior is gonna be this. When we're looking at our product template here, we'll come in and edit reusable component and we're going to have an option menu in here that's going to let us choose uh, either component one in that slot or component two in that slot or component three in that slot. And it'll assemble those into that slot using those assembly constraints that we were looking at a minute ago. Okay. Um, so that's the, that's the behavior we're after. And what I'll do is I'll build slot B right now uh, to, uh, to show you how that's done. So we're going to start... Uh, we have an expression uh, out here already created, actually, that's called UI Choice B, and this is going to pick up uh, either a zero, one, or a two from that list uh, as we as we make the change in in PTS. We also have an options list uh, that's a list expression that just has the names of those three components that we're going to uh, that we're going to uh, show in the UI inside PTS uh, inside this product template. Uh, so when we go into PTS author here, we'll see that, right? So there's our, our UI that you saw uh, before outside. Each of these is just a number that's, that's grabbing that, um, that uh, expression that we were looking at, UI choice A, B, and C out there. It's a number expression out there. Uh, you can see we've got NX update turned on, so it'll immediately replace. Um, the display style for these is a list expression, and we're, we're using that options list, right? That's that only list expression in the part out there. Uh, and that's, again, that's providing us this list. So we could put anything in this list. You could put foreign languages in this list, anything at all. This is going to return a zero and a one and a two here as we, uh, as we do these, these, uh, these options, okay? And then based on that zero, one, or two, we're going to do some, we're going to do some stuff. Okay, we're going to return the index. This return the index makes it return the zero, one, or the two, as opposed to returning that that whole string, right? The the value that's in there. So the index is what we want here. So zero, one, or two, right? So it's going to come out of that. Um, based on that, then when that value changes, we're running here uh, a visual rule called choose a. This is slot a, so we've got a rule called choose a. Okay, and and that particular one, that choose a rule, uh, if we look at this, goes and fetches that expression for UI choice A, and then puts it into a switch statement here. And the switch statement here goes and says, if it's a zero, swap in component one. And if it's a one, switch it to component two. And if it's a two, switch it to component three, right? So these, switch A, switch A to C1, A to C2, and A to C3, these are also visual rules, and these are in here, right? And if we look at each of those, those just have this replace component in them. Now, this is, this is a little trick that's going in here that's super useful. Um, these have a component name. There's the, there's the file name that's out here, that's this one, two, three out here. Uh, but these have a component name 
that refers to the, the component that's in slot A right now and the component that's in slot B or slot C right now. And this component name we can use um, to, to replace here. This is uh, you, in, in the regular replace component command as well. Um, and then what we can do is we can maintain that name as we swap in that component name as we swap in different parts. And that's going to allow us to reuse this insert A to continue to replace parts into that slot A, which is pretty nice. Okay, so we're going to replace this with component two or component three, and, and that it's going to retain that component name of insert A all the time because we're telling it to maintain that name down here. We're also telling it to maintain relationships. So that what this is doing is maintaining the uh, assembly constraints, right? And it's going to use, again, those named faces. Oh, I didn't do it before, but this, the faces inside the sockets here are similarly named. There's a, an A left, an a, a right, and an A floor, I think. Or a C over here, of course, for C, but the, the, those, those three for A and for B and for C. So we'll maintain those, those assembly constraints between the named face in the socket and the named face in the, the, the component. And then we just have to just have to name those three faces on the components the same, essentially label the interfaces on the same on the components that are going to swap into to similar sockets, right? So with that in place, uh, that, that's that's what you do to, to do A. So let's do that for let's do that for uh, for choose B. In fact, we can take this choose A right here and um, let me copy that name. Um, Control C, copy that name, and I did. Uh, Re rename there and that that brought that up and I can grab that and copy that name there just some use it again and I can copy this visual rule now and again I'll, I'll rename this one now to be choose B right and this is going to be our rule for swapping slot B okay now this is the wrong expression we don't want to do this with UI choice A here so I'm going to delete this guy and let's go to our um, fetch commands here and let's go grab actually I, I want to do it the easy way grab expressions here I can grab UI choice B the expression and add that to this uh, to this rule and uh, and just drop that up in there so that's going to specifically go grab the value of that expression um, and I'm going to connect that dot and connect that dot and so that guy is now going to swap in UI choice B instead right now I don't have these, I don't have the switch B rules yet. Uh, so let's go work on those. Okay. So I'm going to go, I'm going to switch A to C1, let's use this one as our kind of our template here. Again, I'm going to rename that and I'll uh, actually, I'm going to just for fun, I'm going to switch that to B right now and grab that much of it and copy it and then cancel. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just cannibalizing the name there. Um, then we'll copy that rule and rename it and call this one switch B to C1. And let's copy that one again and rename it. And we'll call this one switch B to C2. And similarly copy that, copy that again and rename it and call this one switch B to C3. Okay. Now we haven't created an assembly swapper node yet, but we wanna do that <laughs> to, to, to essentially take this set of four to, to one, right? We wanna have one node to be able to just do that all in one, but we haven't built that node yet. So we're thinking about that. So so let's go work on these, these B ones here. So this is B to C1. This is gonna, this actually may be really close already. Oh yeah, we need to, to edit this guy, change this to insert B, right? It's going into slot B. But other than that, I think this is all the same. So this is going to swap component one into, into slot B. In fact, let's, uh, again, we'll copy that insert B there. So we have that handy. And uh, we'll use that again. So that's B to C1. Here's the C2. Here again, let's switch that one to insert B. And this one as well here to insert B. And then we just need to go to our choose B here and, and switch these rules, right? So this one's looking A to C1, switch that to B. And this one here will switch to B and this one here will switch to B, okay? So now these are all our B rules that are calling in this one that's UI choice B that's in choose B, right? 
So it's going to look a lot like this one. This is A with it's going to expression A and, and the switch A rules. And then B here is UI choice B and, and those guys. Okay. Now choose B, right? We're going to, we're going to invoke that when we um, change the second, the second uh, um, option menu, right? Uh, when we do that, when this value changes, we'll double click that to change that to true and right click here and say, we want to choose B, right? And so that'll, that'll now, um, when, when this value changes, zero, one, or two, it's now going to run that choose B. When it runs choose B, it's going to go fetch that expression that we just changed as part of that UI widget and come down and look at whether that's a zero, one, or a two, and it'll swap the component for us, right? So that's how that works. So now we should publish this and come out. And this is where we cross our fingers and hope we got it right. <laughs> And we'll edit reusable component there. So this is the first one again, right? Swap it in one and two and three and B is not changing there, right? And then this one now we should be able to, uh, we should be able to swap, but it's not doing it yet. So I missed something. Let's look at what that might be. Um, so we have this, Let, let's look really quick here. If I switch that, B to component one. Let's look at the expressions really quick. And that's going to zero. That's correct. And let's similarly say, put that on component three instead and do the expressions. That's going to two. Okay. So the, the expression is working correctly. We're getting the right, we're getting the right expression out of the UI widget. And let's look at what's happening in here. So here we've got that on NX update. That's right. We've got the right option list. That's all good. Uh, in here, we're saying choose B. So that's correct. Um, in choose B, we are, did we connect that up? Yep, we did. So we're getting UI choice B. That's going into the switch. This little dollar one. Uh, is an indication of the the first value that's coming in the coming in the top. If there are multiple connectors, there'll be dollar one, dollar two, dollar three up there. But dollar one is the first the the first value coming in. So that's good. Uh, and in here, our case uh, yeah is switch B to C one, C two, C three. So those look right. And if we go to switch B here, this is go and insert B to component one. And that's all how we want it. We want that true, false, maintain. Good. So those all look good to me. Uh, oh, 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 I got it. <laughs> C1 here, we've got component one in here, right? And we copied and pasted that and on C2, we didn't change it. So it's only, it's, it's swapping in component one uh, every time. <laughs> so that was my mistake. So there we go. So there's C2 and there's C3. So let's edit that and put in three there. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. So that should get all three of those guys now. So we'll publish that, uh, saves it into the part and, uh, and exit. And then this now, uh, should do what we want. So this now, yep, there we go. So there's two and one and three, right? And the beauty here, of course, is that these are uh, independent. They're using the same components, of course, right? Um, we can put one in both of those, right? And, and But but we don't have to. Um, so pretty nice example here, simple example of, again, swapping components into sockets. Uh, I mentioned the, the planes inside there uh, yeah, we've got face turned on. So that one's the, the C right and C left and, and C floor, right? Um, as you can see there, these similarly, there's a, you know, there's a B left, B right in there. Um, and again, what's happening there is uh, the assembly constraints exist already. Uh, if we look at the Bs there, for instance, right? As we look at each one of these, you'll see that again, it's using the named faces, it's that assembly left that's coming into the insert right? It's the, the part that's getting swapped in, um, has an assembly left and assembly right and an assembly floor. 
or B, I think, bottom. And then uh, that's that's assembled to these these B left right and uh, floor that are in in the socket, right? So so again, um, the the key here. Oh, uh, and one more point I wanted to make on purpose when I built these three components, these three variations. Um, that's that's a different one. Let's uh, da, 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 da. let's turn that on and grab. We've got two threes right now. Let's grab a two. There we go. So so three different components here. Um, I did intentionally three completely different assembly techniques there as well. Uh, right. So this guy is uh, a sphere that's lopped off using some planes on those three planes. It started as a sphere and trimmed just trimmed these three planar surfaces and named them, right? Um, component one is that guy. That one is um, started as a block. There's a block and there's a hollow or a, 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 a shell to create the, the hollow here and then added a sphere in there and did an offset and things like that. But the point is these, these three planar faces on this one came from the block feature, right? So that's a different construction technique uh, three here as well. Uh, this one was a sketch and extrude, right? So this guy, um, yeah, this one, this one is, is, yeah, as I mentioned, had a sketch and extrude and then some blends to, to round all the, round all those edges. But the point is here that these three are not derivatives of each other. They, the, the, the modules that you swap into an assembly can be completely different uh, construction techniques. They can be completely different models coming from different CAD systems or anything at all. Uh, as long as you, in the NX model, you you assign those consistent names, right? Consistent interface for where it's going to plug into the rest of the system. And as long as you've designed that well, designed the sets of names correct well to 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 to, to assemble it in, then uh, the the assembly constraints can can very happily update uh, as we do that. Um, I believe you also want to have in the load options in here, there's this guy, this allow replacement right here. Um, this option in here is one that, that allows that behavior exactly right there. So when you, when you replace component with a component that's not a, a derivative model or not the same model, um, then yeah, it can it can prevent that if you want it to, but but we want that on because we want to allow that behavior. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's that. Hopefully that makes sense and uh, is is useful for what you're doing. Um, again, well designed interface for for swapping it in there, and then on the PTS side, um, you know from the from the selection widget here. We're running the visual rule to, to do that choose. And uh, that choose contains a, uh, the switch statement here for the, for the different options. And then each one of those options is gonna have its, its own replace here. Uh, and that's how, that, uh, that's how that works, okay? So again, hope that, hope that helps. Uh, feel free to give me a call if you have any questions or, or uh, uh, get stuck, okay? Thanks, talk to you soon, bye-bye.